So in the last video, we took apart the airbrush and had a look inside as well talked about how to give it a good overhaul. If you haven't seen that one yet, the link is at the bottom of the video description below. In this video, we'll go through how to simply do some color changes to your airbrush as well as cleaning between sessions. It's actually quite simple and everyone usually have their own ways of doing it. So what we'll cover here is just showing you how I do it. Okay, color changes. It might seem very basic stuff, but there actually is a routine for me for it. And a lot of people do ask these questions like, how, what, what do you do to do color changes? And how do you clean your airbrush in between sessions, you know, long periods of sessions? So I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna show you how I do it in my routine. And apologies, my compressor just kicked in. Um, so basically, like, here's how I do it. I'll explain why I do certain things. There's kind of like two routines that I get into when doing color changes and uh, cleaning you know, my airbrush and stuff like that. And you will find your own you know, routine after a while. So here we go. So basically here we have the airbrush here. Let me go ahead and spray some stuff. I have some stuff sitting in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use Minotaur coal. I had that lying around, so we'll go ahead and use that. Put a couple of drops in here. And then we'll go ahead and spray away. Okay. Pull back, make a little smiley face. There you go guys, have a nice day. Okay, so, uh, so you're spraying. Now what happens is when you're spraying, dry tip builds up. This happens on any airbrush with the acrylic paints that we use. It dries fast. So what I do is while I'm spraying, I get in the habit and I've already built up this habit. So when I'm spraying, I notice when the dry tip is going to get in the way. And that happens, I'll just pinch you know, paper towel in between the uh, needle. It'll be more than enough to wipe away the dry tip and go again. And if you want to prolong dry tipping, uh, check out my video on prolonging dry tip and what you do is you drag dab and you coat the needle in between sessions It should last you about four hours before you have to do it again if you're going to be spraying that long So here we are spraying away and this time we change colors There are two routines here. First of all The first routine I do really easily is is when you know I'm spraying short periods of time between colors so nothing's really built up in the cup already and again, good tip is never fill up the cup, okay? Don't even fill it halfway. All you really need is a couple of drops to get your, yourself going. Um, and a, the drop will last you for a while, okay? So, in the future, in the short colors changes, I will just go ahead and grab Windex, pour it in my cup. I have a spray box that I make every time I do, you know, airbrushing. And then I'll just dump it. Do it again. Dump it. Fill it up again. Piece of paper towel. Soak it up and just do a nice wipe inside and maybe outside. And that gets most of the color out already. Go ahead and fill it up and spray it out. And this is the point where, you know, a cleaning station helps because you don't get to spray all those things, but it's pretty clean now. Okay. And that was it. That was pretty simple for a color changes. Okay. There's still color in there. Go ahead and spray some more on the table as well i guess and there we go nice clean color change there ready for the next color now here's the thing when you are uh doing long sessions like one color and you're doing a really long session sometimes what happens is two things uh it dries up in your cup okay that's bound to happen especially if you overfill it it'll dry in your cup and that's why i suggest never overfilling it it uh, prevents uh, less drying in the cup because when it dries and it gets all, you know, um, clunky, it'll drop into the bottom and then go try to get through your air, uh, airway here and clog it up. Okay, the other thing is that when you're doing a prolonged session, dry tip happens inside the reservoir here. Okay, so when that happens, it's a little hard to clean in between color sessions. So there's two ways around this and this is how we do it in a long color session. So let's fill it up again with coal. Three drops, we're spraying color again. Assuming that we've been doing this for maybe 20 minutes, things build up even though you've been cleaning, clearing out the color, the dry tipping. Okay, what happens is, you know, it dries up on the side of the cup here and inside the uh, regulator here, you'll get dry tip. The way I do it is I first of all, fill it up. Okay, to handle the dry stuff inside there, I will take a brush just go and swirl it around. And that's a good way to, you know, 
get off get the paint off the walls. Okay? And then just dump it. Come up again. Wipe it, dump it in. Okay. You go now it's all clean. Now again, what how how do you handle the uh See, it's bubbling here now because there's already paint drying up in the reservoir here. People wonder what's the easiest way to do it. You gotta be careful here, but I'll show you how to do it. Very simple. And this is why sometimes you will see less in videos, or me in videos. Uh, take off the backing of the uh, airbrush. Okay, and just have it sit here. Because we're already used to spraying it like this without the backing. Okay. Reason why is this. When we do long color uh, spraying, it'll build up. Dry people will build up inside the reservoir. So what we do is fill it up with uh, your cleaner, which I'm using Windex here, and then unscrew the needle chuck a little so that your needle is free to go, free to move. So what we'll do is just do this a little. And if you want, just go ahead and use the brush. You know, make sure you're brushing against the needle inside there. Do this a couple of times, spray it out while holding it down. Alright, and but be very careful, don't jab it in. You don't want to mess up the needle tip. Alright, just do this a couple times. Alright, tighten it up, and you're ready to go again. And that should have cleared out any gunk inside here of the needle, of the tip. And that's really how you do, you know, prolonged color changes. Now, in between sessions, we gotta keep you know the airbrush clean. So again, do the same routine as you would cleaning your airbrush. Okay, there's only one extra step that I, I added here. Okay. And clear it out. Wipe it up. Make sure all the paint's gone. And just to be sure, I'll just do that. Get a full spray. And also, it might help at the end too, when you're at the end of your session, to make sure you're clearing out any uh, specks of paint that might be in here, or any specks of paint that might be in the tip here on the airbrush. I would raise my PSI all the way up that I can get. Because that will help you know, clear out the uh, funnel inside here. Any uh, possible stuckage, you call it. Okay, so I got that all cleaned up. All the color out. Now here's something important is between sessions, uh, especially when you're using varnishes, sometimes not all the varnishes out. You know, sometimes color's not always out. Okay, so what we do is we go ahead and Carefully, just make sure after it's all cleaned up, do the needle chuck, pull the needle out carefully, okay, give it a nice little wipe down, like this, clear out anything you needle, go ahead and put some cleaner on the towel you're uh, wiping it with, okay, make sure you get anything out of there, anything out of there, it's important, because especially with varnish, it might dry up and you'll have a hard time, um, you know, Pulling back on the trigger on the next session. But once you've done that, it's nice and clean your uh, needle. Be careful to put it back into the airbrush. Push down to make sure the uh, trigger is set. So you don't bump the needle against the trigger. Push it in as far as it goes. Don't force it. There's no need to. Put back on the needle, chuck and tighten. Okay. Now you can leave it, uh, you know, now you can you know, store it away and use it another day. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes what I would do is because I set my uh, airbrush, my main airbrush, usually the chrome, on my uh, you know work desk on on a holder until I'm ready to do the next session. I usually would drop Windex or uh, cleaner uh, inside the uh, um, cup, just a couple drops, and that helps you know keep uh, anything in there off of uh, drying off of the uh, side walls or the uh, the funnel in here. Okay. So there you have it. That's how I do color changes. And that's how I keep my airbrush clean in between sessions. Now, let's go over a little important point here. And you're going to hear arguments about this a lot. Okay? Using Windex to clean your airbrush is a bad thing. So a lot of people say. Because of the ammonia in uh, Windex here. They say, you know, bad reaction to the brass. Anyways, I never had a problem using Windex on here. It doesn't mess with the metal or what have you. It might have for some other people. I don't know why it would have. Okay, but because of the ammonia and Windex, people are like, "Oh no, don't use don't use Windex to clean your airbrush. You'll eat your airbrush, or you know, 
make chaos spawns appear in your closet or something. Okay, um, never had a problem, but what you can do if you're really, really worried about it, then just get airbrush cleaner. Okay, this is from Badger. They have different airbrush cleaners out there. A lot of, uh, made, a lot of media makes one. Uh, Vallejo makes airbrush cleaners. I wouldn't buy Vallejo airbrush cleaner. It's really expensive. Again, I think a lot of people really, really overstate the thing with the Windex and the Moon. It's not like you're going to leave it in there like I do. Get you a session. But if you're really worried about it, don't use Windex. Use airbrush cleaner. Same thing. Uh, it's just Windex is a lot more cheaper. I can get a gallon of this stuff where it's very cheap. Okay, so, important thing, if you're really worried about the ammonia, if you're worried about what other people say about ammonia, just make sure you just clean it out. Just use it for cleaning, you know, um, color changes and, and clean your airbrush, and that's all you have to do. Even Ken says you could use Windex to clean the airbrush. Don't believe me? Go we'll watch Introduction to Airbrush with Ken Schofield. And there you have it, how to do simple color changes as well as what I do to clean my airbrushes in between sessions. If you got any comments or suggestions, please post them down below. And if you have more detailed questions, send a message on YouTube or Facebook. This video will be added to a new playlist called Airbrushing Intermediate so you guys can find all the videos in the series. In the next video, we'll talk about thinning paints. Dun, dun, dun. So thank you for watching guys and happy airbrushing.